Do you want to automate workflow creation inside HubSpot? Do you want to get AI to build your workflows for you rather than going to workflows, clicking to create from scratch and, you know, adding triggers, doing the whole thing manually, right? Which is how we've been doing so far. If you want to use AI to create HubSpot workflows, this tutorial is for you. We're going to talk about this new feature, which is the ability to create HubSpot workflows with the AI assistant that we now have inside HubSpot. This whole thing is very recent. Okay, so just so that you know, it, depending on when you're watching this video here, it might be that this feature is even more advanced than what I'm going to show you now. But I just thought it, it you know, I just thought it was worth um, recording a quick video on the topic because I'm very excited about this feature. I'm very excited about it because creating HubSpot workflows can be a little bit of a complex task if you're not familiar with automation in general, right? So the AI assistant helps a lot. Now, before we go there, you have to make sure that you know, have access to HubSpot workflows in the first place, right? So if you don't have HubSpot workflows, you have to review your account and billing and make sure that you have that in the first place. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to use AI to create workflows, right? So workflows are located here inside the automation section. Now, I'm going I'm, I'm going to go by the assumption that you know what I'm talking about, that you know what HubSpot workflows are and you have some basic knowledge on creating workflows, right? What is a trigger? What are actions? If you are coming from zero, the best thing for you to do would be to click on my other tutorials here on my YouTube channel. I have other tutorials on creating HubSpot workflows and automation inside HubSpot. And you need to have a basic knowledge before you use AI to do stuff for you. Honestly, I think this is valid for other things as well, not only HubSpot workflows, but this is a topic for another day. Either way, automation, right? Overview. So now what we have here is we have a quick, what do you want to automate message here? We didn't have this some time ago, so I'm really excited about it. So just as a test, I added a prompt here. Basically the prompt that I added is create a HubSpot workflow that is triggered when, that is triggered when someone submits, sorry, too fast. Someone submits my consultation request form. This is a form that I have inside HubSpot. The workflow should send a three email nurturing sequence over one week. So notice that here in my prompt, I'm adding information about the trigger, which is the consultation request form submission. I'm adding information about the actions, which are in this case, my three emails, as well as my delays. Notice that I'm saying sequence over one week. So I'm hoping that the AI assistant will calculate my delays based on this one week length that I've added here. Now that we have this, let me just click to create automation. And um, here is my prompt automatically added inside the copilot, um, the HubSpot AI assistant, right? This is the form that I was reading for you now. Let's see what the what, what are the results that we get here? What is the outcome? Processing our request, your workflow will set up as follows. Trigger when someone submits the consultation request form, action sequence email one, wait two days, email two, wait two days and email three. So I really like the fact that obviously it understood that the trigger is the consultation request form. Email one comes up and then we have a two day delay, email two and then a two day delay and then email three. So that works well. I could even go um, further and say, let's just do a three day delay rather than two, right? This is just a suggestion here. It's suggesting me this because I've added that I wanted all the emails to be sent within a one week time period. And so it's just simply suggesting two days here. It calculated, it sort of split one week between three emails, right? But I could go and say, let's do three days instead of two. It's absolutely fine. Either way, I like the fact that it understood precisely what I want to do. Trigger, email one, delay, email two, delay, and email three, right? Now, are you ready to create this workflow? Once created, I can enable and manage it from your HubSpot automation area. Let me know if you want to proceed or make any adjustments. Yes, let me just see what it comes up with. I don't know if it's gonna go ahead and create the workflow already or if it's gonna ask me something else. Either way, I, I'm honestly, I'm happy when it actually asks me something else. That's mainly because I would rather answer a few questions and get exactly what I want than, you know, HubSpot simply going there and creating some random thing and I have to adjust everything manually later. Just double work for me, right? Okay, so the workflow has been created. This is the trigger, these are the actions and it's saying that it's currently in a disabled state, right? So the workflow is not active. I wouldn't turn it on for me. And um, here's the link to the workflow. So let's just take a look at it. Here you go. So trigger has completed form submission. The form name is consultation request. Great, amazing. Email one, consultation request follow-up two days later. 
email two, consultation request follow up, right? And then a two days later, email three, consultation request follow up. Actually, it's very interesting the fact that it automatically selected the emails for me. I think that it, this is because this is a fictional HubSpot account and these are literally the only emails that I have published inside my email section, right? Otherwise, I assume it would have asked me something like, what are the emails, right? Remember that before we create an email sequence as a workflow inside HubSpot, we have to have the emails published in the first place. There is no way you can create a, an email sequence without emails inside of it, right? So whether you're using AI for it or doing it manually, you have to have the emails created in the first place. So in this case, Copilot automatically understood that we're talking about these emails here, right? If you're doing this on your own and you see a different result, something like, you know, the AI assistant is asking you, hey, what are the emails or something like that? I think that's a that's a very common um, scenario there because obviously, you know, if we're building email sequence, we have to have emails, right? So I think you would probably have asked me what are the emails, but either way, since these are the only emails that I have <laughs> published inside my HubSpot account, it automatically selected them for me. This is it. This is it. This is what I asked for. I requested an email sequence triggering from consultation request form three days a split with two-day delays in between them. So honestly, very good results, very good results here. I am very happy with the result. My next step here would be to review settings, enrollment, turn it on and, and test it out, right? So as usual, overall, I find that using the AI assistant for creating workflows helps you save a lot of time if you are using the HubSpot terminology, right? So this is my tip for you today. If you are using AI to create your HubSpot workflows, make sure that you're still using the terminology that we have inside HubSpot, right? What, what, is, what do you mean by terminology? Every marketing automation tool gives different names to things, right? For example, inside HubSpot, a data point is basically a property, right? Inside Active, Active Campaign, for example, it's called a field, right? So make sure that you're actually using HubSpot's own terminology to get AI to create the workflow for you. This is when you're going to get better results. Here's another example of a perfect HubSpot terminology, right? What do you want to automate? When contact lifecycle stage changes to lead, so what we were saying here is the property lifecycle stage has been updated to lead, assign contact owner automatically. Everything that we have in this prompt is pure HubSpot terminology, right? Lifecycle stage is the name of a HubSpot property. Lead is an option inside the property lifecycle stage. Assignment is a type of workflow action that we have as well. Contact owner is another HubSpot property. So in short, make sure that you add HubSpot terminology to your prompt when getting AI to create a workflow for you. Okay, this is really when you're gonna get the best results for, for your prompts there. And obviously take a look at these templates here to make sure that you are following a certain pattern and before we, you go ahead and create your very first workflow. So this is my tip for you today in case you're using AI to create your HubSpot workflows. Overall, we have a lot of content on HubSpot, a lot of content on AI automation here in the channel. So don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials on the topic. I hope you liked this tip. Thanks for watching. <laughs>